Hey guys, I want to do a video for you um, on the Lyman Lube Sizer 450 and the Lube Sizer 4500. So first we'll go over the differences. You can see here, they have a different rim and handle. Boom. Boom. That's obvious. Secondly, on the very bottom, where you make your adjustments, we've got a different style set up here. That one's got a nut. And on this one, you have a completely different style. Adjustment nut. But, um, that's pretty much the only differences I've noticed other than the hole that they drilled into the 4500, which I'll show you. You've got a hole right here for this heater coil. And try your best not to break these heater coils because they're expensive. And I could not find them anywhere for like cheaper than 50 bucks. I even called the distributor. I mean the manufacturer and asked them if they'd sell me one and they wouldn't. So they've installed, they drilled a hole here, a bigger hole, and then they drilled a smaller hole in the center and put a set screw in there to hold your heater coil in place. I just tuck mine in that hole. And then you tighten your set screw. Now I had a base on my 450, but I didn't like the way it looked. I thought it looked really tacky. It's just a square aluminum base. So I'm going to show you guys what I did. My 450 is exactly like my 4500 now. So the first thing I did was I took a 3H drill bit. Well, first thing I did was I took a center punch and I punched in the back of here and I took a 3 8 and I drilled this out back here. Now how far did I drill it out? You guys may be wondering. First, we'll measure the heater coil, I guess. It'll be the best thing to do, eh? Okay, that goes in two inches. Two inches of exposed metal there for the heater coil. And I drilled this out to two and an eighth. So we're good to go on that. That was a 3 8 drill bit. This is made in America, so you can expect everything to be standard. This next one, 1964th, is what I used for the larger hole right here on the side where your set screw is going to go in. They've got a recess around it. But I didn't start with that. What I did was I took a center punch. I drilled the small hole all the way into the bigger hole. And then I took this one and drilled it out but not all the way down, just about halfway, so it would look good. And this tiny one right here is a 9 64th, and that's what I used for the set screw. And then of course I went to Ace Hardware and I got some uh, little Allen head screws and a tap to tap those in there. And thread those in. So that's that, and now I can take this out without having an ugly ass block on my table and stick it right in here. Tighten it down with my set screw and I'm good to go. What else did I want to tell you guys about? Oh. Patience. Now we all know that reloading and, and bullet casting is patience consuming. <laughs> I'm not a very patient guy. Sometimes I like to get things started quicker. This heater coil takes about 30 minutes to an hour. I mean, depending on really what kind of lube you're using to warm up. So what I do is I take my trusty propane blowtorch here with my on-off switch. Spark it up. And I just run up and down. And I also go around here. And I do this for about a minute or two. It's already up the temperature right now, so I don't want to make it too hot. You don't want to overdo it with the blowtorch because you can ruin your O-rings that are inside the cylinder. Well, what else can I show you? Another thing that'll help with speed is changing out the 
wax when you run out. This thing's a pain in the ass because you got to take this little screw, which is quarter inch by the way. And you'd have to sit here and you could either do it this way, which still takes a long time. Or if you wanted to leave this up while you're doing it, which I wouldn't recommend, you do it like that and that'll take all fucking day. So what I do is I've got my drill here. It's a Bosch. Got my little adapter piece so I can plug it right into a socket. And of course I'm using a quarter inch socket. Tighten that on there. And you have to remember that right is actually up and left is down. So it's opposite of the whole righty tighty lefty loosey. Just put this puppy on there. And that'll raise it up real quick. And you can all you can also do the same thing for tightening it back down. But I want to caution you on doing that because number one, um, if you put too much pressure on it, you won't realize it because it drills in your hand rather than the wrench. You can't really feel the pressure at all. And if you overpressure it, you'll have wax coming out all over the place. It'll get really sloppy. And also, you could break this bolt down on the bottom. And uh, I know this because I did it. And I even welded mine back up, but it was just, it was never right again. So I had to go ahead and call Lyman and order a new one. Um, if you lose this, or you know, one of your children has friends over and they steal it because they think it looks cool, you can always buy another one. All you need is just a quarter inch driver with a little ratchet. And boom. Set. Hope that answers any of your questions. And check out my other video if you want to see how to light up your press. Because I've got a very quick and easy tutorial on doing LED upgrades.